plaintiff, John Pirro, says a year after he started dating the defendant, he discovered she was a crack addict. John says after she got sober, they got married. But the defendant soon relapsed, and John is desperate to get her some help. He's also suing her for unpaid loans. Defendant Dominique Jones first used crack five years ago, and now she's a full-blown crack addict. However, Dominique always promised John that if she got to meet Judge Mathis, she would put more effort into her recovery, and she hopes to turn her life around today. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Uh, can I give you some background on us? Yeah, sure. I, I met her offline. Um, we dated for quite a while. And um, when did you meet? Uh, four years ago. And I thought she was an incredible woman. I thought she was beautiful. She has a good sense of humor. Okay. Um, and then as, as our dating relationship went on, I realized that um, she had a problem. What type of problem? A drug problem. Uh, crack. When did you realize that? Probably about a year into our, our dating relationship. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I frequently say that you should date about a year <laughs> before you marry a person because I say, quote, unquote, they can hide a crack habit but up to a year before you find out. And you're telling me it's the exact what I've been saying to people for 23 years. And it happened just as I always predict. That one year mark, you discovered she was on crack. <laughs> Your Honor, I, I offered to try to help you. Let's get... I'm just saying how it took you so long to right. discover that and that that's why people should wait to make big moves like marriage or perhaps even moving in together with a person until they about a year you need to see what the deal is. And you take you might take you a minute to figure it out. Crackheads are the slickest people in the world. But is she in recovery? No. Okay. Recovering crack addict, I'll say recovering addict. But people who come in here and act like they're not on crack, and <laughs> they've never been, and they doing this silly laughing and all that, I call them crackheads. Go ahead, so uh, then sir. After I, I discovered that, like I said, I tried to get her to go to rehab. But I do love her very much. So I, I ended up separating. I ended up ending the relationship. When? Uh, two years ago. How did you try and get her help? Uh, I called around to rehab places. Mm -hmm. I tried to convince her that this would be the best for me, her, because she's an incredible woman. Okay. She really is. Good. She what did... was she saying when you said, uh, let's get help? Oh, I'll do it. Uh, give me a date. You know, like I'll do it December 1st or I'll oh. do it January, you know, and it was always a, a put off date. Yeah. And um, she did end up going to rehab when we split up. Okay, good. So we, we did end up getting back together. Um, we were together for probably six months, seven months. Starting when? 2021. All right. And what happened? Well, I thought, again, she was doing great. She seemed to be doing great. So that's when I did propose to her. We did get married. She never moved in. She kept her own apartment. Did she tell you why? She had to wait for her lease to, to end. Okay. Uh, well, that's when I discovered she was using again. Okay. That's okay. why she's doing And I've tried to tell her so many times. She knows this. I love her. I think she's an incredible woman. And I know our family loves her. She just needs, you know, to get some help around her. Let me hear from you, ma'am. He's absolutely right. I do have an addiction. And prior to why he's here. I'm here personally because I always told my husband that if I ever got to meet Judge Mathis and have this talk that we're somewhat having now, that I would really try and put more effort into being clean and staying clean. I know what I'm saying, but to actually be here, it's like, oh, wow, we just say no joke. So long story short, I always tell him that if I got to meet you, talk, have a conversation with you, 
as far as my addiction and where I want to be in life. I always said to me, I feel like in my mm -hmm. heart that would make me stop. stop. Right. I don't know why During it's you. your addiction, you have been telling him that if you could just talk to me, you'd stop? Mm hmm Literally. I don't know what it is about him. I've kept my research on you, and I've followed you very closely. And I'm like, you know what? The things that you've been through and you've made something of your life, obviously you're a judge, um, I felt like you could offer me words of wisdom as far, or point me in the right direction because I'm not a self-motivator anymore. I'm one of those people that you got to, and I'm be honest. And I always said to myself, you know, Judge Mathis can make it in life and do how he doing and still be a human being. I could do it too. I'm so touched by that. <laughs> you have been telling him that if you could just talk to me, you'd stop. Mm -hmm. Literally. I don't know what it is about him. I've kept my research on you. And I've followed you very closely. And I always said to myself, you know, Judge Mathis can make it in life and do how he doing and still be a human being. I could do it too. I'm so touched by that. Plaintiff John Pirro is suing his wife, who admits she became a crack addict five years ago after her ex shot at her. Some of it has to do with um, the love I show in helping addicts to recover. Right. The healing that I seek. Even though I have my own unique ways of going about it, my attempt always is to try and heal people when they come here. Someone said about me, they said, I must be suffering from crack trauma from my life experiences. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. They are absolutely right. Uh -huh. They were absolutely right. I was traumatized for decades by crack addicts. Some very close to me that altered my life because of their addiction, altered and caused others to suffer, children to suffer and be traumatized by their drug addiction. And so I guess that did traumatize me being a part of that and seeing all the other crack addicts that were close to me, I'd grown up with as kids just playing and you're my best friend and we did everything together. And then now I got to see you as a crack addict because I'm still coming back to the neighborhood. I'm still going back to the houses where the women I respected and the dads I respected. I'm going by to see them because I still identify most with that community. And so it's hurtful for me to see that and it's been traumatizing over the years, I'm finding. And so that's probably where my heart for healing and my obsession with crack comes from. <laughs> and it might be therapy when I have fun and talk about folks and ask them if they all crack. So that might be the therapy that I need in addition to helping you all heal. Uh, and so it's a big compliment to me. Thank you so much no for letting me know that I am being effective and even have folks who want to come before me uh, because they think if they see and talk to me that their life will be changed. And that's the highest compliment um, I could receive. And then I want you to come back once you've uh, healed. Absolutely. Uh, all right, like, like uh, Luke says, you don't think I know my bio. <laughs> I think you know. You don't think, y'all don't think I know my bio. I want thought me, you had one. Y'all want me to give you a sermon? Yeah. Yeah. Want a sermon? Yeah. yeah. Luke will tell you <laughs> that Jesus came upon 10 lepers. 10 lepers, they were outcasts of their day, looked down upon, shunned, sick, diseased, had been failed by the education system of their day, couldn't get hired because they were lepers. Lo and behold came Jesus. 
I know everybody look down on you. I know everybody don't understand why you're lepers and how you got diseased, but I do. And I'm gonna heal all 10 of y'all. And he did. However, out of the 10 that were healed, as is the case with us many times, only one came back. Hmm. Isn't that what the Bible take? Yep. Anybody know that Bible? Jesus healed 10 lepers and only one returned to say thank you. So I want you to be that one. All right? I hope so. All right. <laughs> so you got something to live up to. If you love me like you say you love me, show me a sign. <laughs> show me a sign that you love me. Amen. By keeping your word and telling me that what you're saying is true and that you're going to come back like that one leper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all think I can preach. Oh, I think I don't wear this robe for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. Uh, Would I get caught cheating in that casino or something? <laughs> Because I think I'm still playing three car body <laughs> and they arrest me. <laughs> no, Judge Miles has been arrested for cheating at the casino. What about all that preaching? He was on the bench, just to quote and start, had the voice of a preacher. So, no, I'm not a preacher, I'm a judge. And I'm too flawed to be a preacher, but I do like to heal. And thank God uh, we're going to be able to do that for you. Cost free, zero to you. Awesome. We'll even find the place for you, all right? Yes, sir. All I right. Appreciate that. I really do. That's probably where my heart for healing and my obsession with crack comes from. And it might be therapy when I have fun and talk about folks and ask them if they're all crack. So that might be the therapy that I need in addition to helping you all heal. Thank you so much no for uh, letting me know that I am being effective. Plaintiff John Pirro is suing his wife, who admits she became a crack addict five years ago after her ex shot at her. I'm so glad that you are, you have come today and you all are open enough to talk about this and seek help, seek healing. So thank you and thank you for oh, bringing you, your wife. I, I love this woman and she promised me if she got to meet you, she knew that you could heal her. And I am so blessed to be here. Thank you. Okay. All right. What's the loans for? Well, during COVID, when we weren't together, I loaned her some money. I knew she wasn't working. So I was trying to help her out. And then um, when we actually did reconnect, we were just friends at that point. When we actually did reconnect and everything, she kept saying, oh, you know, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to pay you back. And I'm like, OK, OK. And I said, well, that would be great because that would show some responsibility. I thought maybe it would help her in her own way. You know, you, you, you borrow the money, pay it back. It's a good lesson. Maybe it'll work. Maybe you'll stop hanging with the same people. Uh, I had a nephew that died from crack. And um, one thing, I used to try to go to NA meetings with him. And I remember one thing was always the people, places, and things. And I've never forgotten that. And that's what I used to try to tell my beautiful wife. It's the people, it's the places, and the things. You have to change. If you don't change those things, you're stuck in the same rut. Yeah. So with the intent of that she was going to pay me back, I mean, sometimes I know she had to pay utility bills or she had to pay whatever. I get that. But I also felt you need to be responsible enough to pay the money back. And this is before you all married. This is. She agreed to pay you. There was a small amount after we were married. Let me hear from you, ma'am. Um, Judge Mathis, he's absolutely right. And I'm, I'm just not gonna sugarcoat it. Everything that I did borrow, cause my bills, that's one thing about me. I've been always good at keeping my bills, a roof over your head. And I'm not gonna lie to you, Judge Mathis. I'm, I'm on national television. So I'm just like, listen, a lot of the money that I borrowed went to my addiction and I think I want to say I, I want to say I think he kind of knew but you know when somebody love you it's almost like I'm playing the heart of the strings and I'm not being funny not because I don't love him it's that drug is something else <laughs> um and you know he would say things like because we you know when I when I smoke we'll sit and we'll talk we'll have 
hours of conversation, you know, because I'm still healing from prior things. Not saying they call it rational, rationalization when I went to rehab. But, you know, I always tell people, you never know what a person went through to get to where they at. So because he would listen to me, you know, at the end of the conversation, it's like, oh, I ain't got any more drugs. Crap. You know, like, well, baby, I got to go, you know, pay the bill or the phone bill. No, I'm good. He know I'm going to pay my bills. So I kind of feel bad and I do need to pay him back. But judge, I'm not going to lie to you. That drug is something else. Like, I'll have a pocket full of money on my way to his house. You have to tell me. <laughs> so he's absolutely right. And I still plan on paying it back at some point. You know what I mean? Just that now this year I realize like my habit is <laughs> and I have the right intent. But like he said, when I walk out them doors, it's it's a whole new ball game for me. I'm more or less a follower. And let's revisit the trauma part you just said people okay. don't know. Two thousand and trauma. Mm -hmm. So two thousand sixteen who I've been with for ten years. You know, I I just fell out of love with him. And I found me a thug, you know, I'm like, oh he about that life. Long story short, I end up, he called CPS on me and I threw, a chair, I threw a chair at the judge. So to this day, she's making me pay for it. But I still have not residential joint custody. And that was strike one. So, I, you know, I was sitting there and my oldest son's father, he's one of those big guys in the street. So it's like, when I seen him smoke at Judge Mathis, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, yeah, okay, this is what's up. Prior to that, I hit it once or twice. I'm like, who pays for this? But when my, at the same person, that I was with, turned around and tried to shoot me twice. So after that, I, that, I felt like, and I'm not being funny, Judge Master, sometimes I really do feel like crack is my only friend because even him, my mom, everybody has went their ways, but that drug is still there. And I'm being honest. Sir, one of the things you said that also works for ex-offenders who are coming home from prison, they need to hear people, places, and things. You have to escape that. Drug addict or otherwise, you can't go back to the same place with the same people and think that the same thing is not going to happen. You have to escape the environment. You can't do it physically many times, so you got to escape it mentally. I thank God I was able to escape it physically. Six months after leaving jail, I was able to go to college and I was still halfway a thug there. Had some of my thug buddies come up there and do our thing there. But by my second, third year, I was past that because it was too hard for them to keep coming up 45 minutes away. And then I got Linda and my wife and started backing away. She was my girlfriend. And so uh, young guys coming from prison, um, they may not have a way to get out of the neighborhood. So you escape mentally. Join that church. Go to that church up the street and be helpful to the church ministry. Mm -hmm. Folks kind of respect that. Brothers on the street will respect you if you're doing the right thing for real. They'll give you a break then. And when I say they'll give you a break because the peer pressure is so heavy mm -hmm. when you come home. And if you can't escape it, the peer pressure will consume you. Mm -hmm. Show love for the hood, show love for yourself, and you'll get a pass. That's been my observation and my experience um, with guys uh, who have to come back to the same environment. I'm so glad that you are, you have come today and you all are open enough to talk about this and seek help, seek healing. So thank you and thank you for so bringing you your here. wife. I, I love this woman and she promised me if she got to meet you, she knew that you could heal her. And I am so blessed to be here, thank you. Plaintiff John Pirro is suing his wife, who admits she became a crack addict five years ago after her ex shot at her. What did she borrow prior to marriage? 3,500. All right, 3,500 is your judgment. I respect you, ma'am, for being totally honest. And I look forward to seeing you back here and uh, with the good news, all right? Yes. And I want it to be a year. So okay. I want to see you next year, next season, bring you back up here. And next time I want you to sue him, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, Your Honor. Oh, I love that. You. Your Honor, can Judge I just say something before you leave? Definitely. I just want to say I really appreciate you taking the time for seeing us. And I really appreciate the fact that you did, we're open-minded considering I have an addiction. I really feel like you are the person to save me. I mean, other than God, obviously. But human form, I really feel like I got this opportunity for a reason, and I'm going to make really good use of it. That's a promise. Great. Thank you. What I say to her, she knows I love her with all my heart. 
And I know she's an incredible woman, and I just want her to get a help so we could put our family together like it should be. Because I love her so much. I just want to say I thank you for putting up with me and dinner with me because it's not easy. If you were me, I'd leave me. So I'm glad you're not me. And just know that everything that we've been through is not going on notice, and it gets greater later. Thank you, babe. I love you. I love you too, babe.